Now, this is the legacy payment system that you've inherited. There are no tests, as you can see. The only documentation is in the README. This mentions that the project was last updated in 2018. Supports a bunch of features. Uh, the way you can set it up is also given over there. But there are a bunch of uh, issues with the existing code. Like PayPal refunds are not implemented. Currency conversion rates are hard coded. The original developers have left the team. One left the company and the others moved to another uh, infrastructure team. Now this is a typical scenario when you inherit any kind of a code base. Okay, now uh, let's bring up specflow. I'm going to start by calling specflow init. It's going to ask me which ID or editor I want to use. I select Claude and then it asks me for the email uh, to fetch the license key from and a bunch of uh, questions to which I answer yes. And now I'm going to bring up Claude. Now, uh, when I'm inside Claude, I uh, ask it a simple statement, which is let's fix the refund flow because that's one of the known issues. Now, Claude will go ahead and, uh, you know, start kind of going through the code, trying to look at what files are part of the refund functionality. Uh, it's currently exploring the code base to look, locate the refund flow files. Now, once it's kind of done identifying that, since there's no documentation, it doesn't really have any documentation to refer to. And uh, this is kind of uh, the traditional way in uh, Claude kind of works when you give it a code base, which it's not familiar with. I'm also not familiar with the code base. So we kind of both, you know, kind of concurrently going through it. Right. So now it's kind of gone ahead and uh, identified the files for the refund flow and it's identified multiple critical issues. Now here is where specflow kind of, uh, you know, picks in. It uh, checks whether there's an existing spec for the file. Now, obviously there's no spec for the file right now. So it's going to go ahead and, uh, you know, fire something which is called a cold start where it wants to uh, create or generate a baseline spec based on the current code base, which is there. We'll kind of go ahead with, uh, you know, kind of uh, accepting that so that, you know, we are able to kind of generate uh, a specification from the existing code to understand its current behavior before we make any fixes to it. Uh, this would take a bit of a time, so we'll kind of let it run uh, because I kind of want want, you to, uh, want to show you what actually happens as part of uh, the uh, cold start call. Right. So now it says cold start success. So let's just go to our uh, ID. Uh, there's a specflow directory which has been created and there's a specs folder in which there's a specification for the refund processor specification which has been created. Now this, as you can notice, it's been started. Generation mode is cold start. It's been generated from existing code analysis. It's got a file spec, which captures responsibility, invariance, side effects, and assumptions, and a bunch of recommendations uh, based on what the current code has and what you know typically best practices recommend. It's also got, uh, you know, detailed specifications for each of the functions, preconditions, post conditions, invariance, inputs, outputs, errors. And it would also have, uh, you know, a bunch of uh, examples plus recommendations for each of these functions as well. So that is what the cold start basically kind of gives us. It also gives us a bunch of, bunch of dependencies uh, where it looks at the call graph and generates dependencies. This is to identify, you know, the internal and the external dependencies which this file has uh, in order to kind of go ahead and uh, create a better specification for, uh, you know, this particular file for which we've generated the spec using specflow. All right. So uh, this is pretty much the cold start part of, uh, you know, the application. So let's kind of go back to the CLI. Now, uh, you know, uh, Claude asks to get the spec because it refers to the spec for any changes that it needs to make. So uh, it kind of reviews the specification, uh, reads through what is there, what are the recommendations, and it will discuss the recommendations with, you know, uh, the developer 
whether the developer should uh, you know accept all of these recommendations so uh, as you can see the control is still fully in your hands you decide what gets done what doesn't get done so Claude here kind of lists a bunch of critical bugs spec recommendations and additional issues which you know it would want us to fix now uh, for the sake of this demo I will just go ahead and uh, potentially you know fix just the critical bugs to keep it short because otherwise the, the demo would become really really long so uh, let me just go ahead and uh, you know ask Claude to just fix the critical issues and leave uh, you know the PayPal part to a later point of uh, time sorry uh, yeah. right so uh, we've asked Claude to go ahead and fix just the critical bugs right now So it's going to go ahead and fix the fee calculation to be proportional to the partial refunds and subtract the fee from the refund amount. So these are the changes which it recommends. I'm not going to kind of review them, although in the ideal scenario, I would. Okay. It's going to fix both the bugs which are there and then update, uh, you know, the documentation which is there in the file itself where it mentions these bugs. Okay, so it's going to remove the bug comments and finally, you know, uh, it's kind of gone ahead and uh, fixed the bug. Now it's going to validate the changes against the spec because it's made code changes. So the spec and the code should be in sync with each other. That's where it calls check drift, where it's going to validate that the changes don't conflict with the specification, right? Now the important part here to note is that when it does a drift check, it it'll show you that you know the uh, there are uh, drifts which are detected and it marks these uh, drifts for review because these drifts are major conflicts right because we've intentionally changed the behavior it is expected that the uh, spec would change now we'll go ahead and uh, you know so once the spec drift is defect detected uh, cloud goes ahead and uh, calls the next spec flow step which is to update the spec so that it's in sync with the code base. Now it's going to do this a few times, uh, one for the actual changes and the other for the recommendations which have been uh, applied to the code base because those, those recommendations were not part of the code base. So the spec needs to be updated to kind of go ahead and, you know, uh, ensure that the spec and the code are in uh, you know so here we can see that the spec has been updated and uh, you know uh, all the uh, changes have been validated so that it does not go ahead now the next part is specflow will go ahead and generate tests it checks whether there's a testing project which is used in this project uh, since there are no existing tests it will make a logical choice of uh, using JUnit uh, and Mockito in order to generate the tests. Now, uh, while these tests are generating, uh, let's kind of go back and look at the specification again to see what are the changes that have been made to the specification after the drift check and the updates. So uh, let's go back to the spec. Now, uh, the difference you'll see that the generation mode is update and it's been updated from the source code analysis uh, based on the changes which uh, has been made now uh, we kind of did not uh, you know accept a couple of recommendations which are the bigger one only the critical one so some of these recommendations which have not been implemented will be in pending state let's also look at a few of the recommendations which we did apply and see what changes are made to that so when you look at the recommendations, you'll see that the status has been changed to applied and you'll have the applied version and date plus the version history, right? So uh, this keeps track of what are the changes which have been applied to the spec. 
Now there's another one because we fixed two. So let's also take a look at that one. Uh, and here it is. The same thing applied as the status and the version changes as well. Right. Okay. So uh, let's look at the test now. Uh, I don't think I accepted the uh, uh, you know change from cloud so let me just accept that all right now here's another important thing that we also create property based base tests uh, in order to go ahead and provide really good coverage for code uh, for the code which we are working with this ensures that you know we are testing you know variety of tests and we are not leaving anything uh, to the open so now let's kind of look at the tests which have been generated you'll see a test directory created and you have the refund processor test this is the uh, you know basic test it will have a bunch of different kind of tests there are constraint tests uh, we check for the constraints there are tests which are you know uh, related to example scenarios there are tests for error condition checks right fee calculation and so on and now let's also look at the uh, property based test let me accept that and uh, we'll kind of go back and look at so there's this new file which is being created for property tests okay uh, these are all the property tests which give you a fairly broad coverage for all the possible scenarios which you know need to be tested for the refund processor in this case Right, so let's just go back to uh, the now. There's certain changes which has been are required in the palm. Uh, Cloud will go ahead and kind of make those changes as well. Right. All right. So these are all the changes which are required for the palm, and that brings us pretty much to the end.